Hello, and welcome to the Palm Sunday edition of online worship here at Ashton Beulah First United Methodist Church. Um, I'm Pastor Preston, and there's a few quick announcements before we get started. The first is that if you like what we're doing, um, and this impacts you and allows you to connect with God in a new way, uh, please consider uh, liking the video and uh, subscribing to the channel down below so you can keep up to date with uh, everything we're doing uh, on this platform. Uh, you will also find a link to our online giving. Um, we'd encourage you now more than ever to please consider doing so if this impacted you. Um, what that allows us to do is it allows us to keep creating content such as this, but it allows us to continue being the church in Ashtabula, Ohio, uh, helping people get the services they need, uh, whether it's groceries, whether it's gas for their cars, um, whether it's to keep their lights on. Um, this is a part of what we do as the church in Ashtabula, and your giving allows us to continue to be the hands and feet of Christ in that area. Now, during the service, there are some hymns, and you're welcome to sing along if you feel comfortable. But if not, don't worry about it. You can find lyrics for the hymns in the description to the video below. Um, lastly, we will be having a Monday Thursday service. Uh, it'll, be, it'll go online on Thursday, but I wanted to give you a heads up because we will be doing online communion. This is a first uh, for many United Methodist churches. And we just wanted to give you a heads up so you can get the elements beforehand. All you need is some bread and some grape juice. Uh, do that and we'll be A-OK. -okay. Without further ado, let us prepare our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and our souls for the coming of the living God into our lives.
be reading from Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O oh Lord, save us. O oh Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Amen. It's a strange time we find ourselves living in, where we are separated from those we care about, where everyday life is different, and probably will be different for a while. Here at Ashtabula First, we want you to know that we are constantly thinking and praying for you. And I'd like to take some time now for us to consider the ways that we can pray for each other as a community. Though we may not be meeting in person, we may not be face to face, our connection is digital, we can still pray and care for one another. For those of us who are trapped within our homes, for those of us who are unable to go out and acquire the things we need, for those of us who have loved ones in the hospital, for those of us who have loved ones who work in those hospitals, for our medical professionals who are struggling to keep up with the demands, who are running out of supplies, whose situation seems very dire. Let us come and pray for them. Would you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, Each day we find ourselves looking in the mirror and going, ah, well, what are we going to do? We have people we know who are, are sick and can't receive the care that they need. We have people we love and care about who are working in hospitals that are overflowing with cases where the need is just so great. God, we ask you to be with us in this time. Be with those of us who um, are stuck, who can't go out and get the things that they need. Be with those who are sick, who are quarantining and isolating themselves. Be with those who are in our hospitals. Be with our caretakers, oh God. Give them the steadiness of hand and the calmness of mind so that they can be the best caretakers that you have called them to be. Be with us, O oh God. Comfort us in this time of uncertainty. But in this time, O oh God, Surprise us. Come in new and unexpected ways. Yes, life as we know it has changed, but you have not. You have remained constant with us. Surprise us with your presence. Come into our daily lives in new and unexpected ways. And for us, create new 
and unexpected ways that we may be the hands and feet, that we may be the living church in Ashtabula, in Ohio, around this country, around the world, that you have called us to be. Allow us to wave our palms, allow us to throw our jackets down, allow us to follow you, to live lives that are not centered on ourselves and our needs, but are rather centered around the lives and the needs of our communities. That we may truly care for each other as you have made us to do. At this time, God, listen to us even as we connect digitally. We are not in the same room. We are not face to face. But rather we are connected by your spirit over great distances. Allow us to come together and bring to you our needs. The ones that haven't been spoken yet. And meet them in only ways you can. Gracious and loving God, O Holy One who calls us from death to life. Allow us to feel close to each other even though we are far away. Allow your spirit to warm our hearts. Even though in some time, even though in these days, sometimes we feel distant from you. Let us all join together in the prayer that you have taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, O God, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For Palm Sunday, we're reading from Matthew 21, the first 11 verses, subtitled, the triumphal entry. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle, and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the King of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. His triumphal entry. 
Hosanna. Sunday mornings where I'm just not feeling it. I know it sounds bad because it's, it's, it seems like that's all I do is Sunday mornings, but there's some where it's just, it's so hard to get up and do what I do. The alarm gets me up not that late anymore, about eight in the morning, and I, I just can, takes all my strength to roll out of bed and get showered and ready to go and dress, and then I drag myself over here, and it's a wonder I make it on time some days. And then I, I feel like I can almost just melt into the pews. And let's just talk about that for a minute, right? Oh, let's, let's have a nice big building where we can get together and worship God. Okay, only problem, we're gonna need places for people to sit. Whose idea was it to be, oh, I got it, hard wooden benches. That's what people will like. And I'm like melting into this thing. So now, not only am I tired, but now my back hurts. And now I'm supposed to be in this pleasant and upbeat mood to experience God. I don't even know how I do it some days. And I think if I could be so bold, I'm not the only one. I think that we all come into seasons in our lives where the energy we have just goes. It's gone. We like to be upbeat and ready for God, but we're, we're not. We get caught in the same old, same old ways of doing things and the same old practices and routines that God almost kind of blends in into the ordinary, into everyday life. But what is so cool about this story today, about Palm Sunday, is that Jesus breaks this mold we have made for God and comes in new and exciting ways. You see, it had been a long time since the people of Israel 
had had a Messiah. There were a lot of people who claimed to be the Messiah now. And they all kind of went about it the same way. The popular thought is that you would have this warlord who would come and uh, have this strike a dramatic pose on top of a white war horse and will come through the main gates and restore Israel. Make things just as good as they were. The Messiah was here to make Israel great again, if I could use contemporary political language, as loaded as it may be. But every time, every time a Simeon or a Judas or a Simon or a Peter was going to come up and try and strike away the Roman hand from ruling Judea, it just got squashed down. Every time a violent uprising was going to happen out of Israel, the Romans came and smashed it down. I imagine for some people, it was like as if Israel was just going to go and do the same old, same old thing over and over and over again. Jesus is different. You see, Jesus, this is a pinnacle of Jesus' ministry coming into Jerusalem because Jesus is not preaching violent uprisings or make Israel great again. Jesus is preaching about the kingdom of God. It is a theological reality. It is a reality about how we think about God, but it is also a political one. A world in which God, heaven, and earth come together as one thing. That there is no separation. That we are with God always. And that we are meant to treat each other, the earth, nature, even other people, the way we were meant to be in the beginning. And Jesus doesn't come to do that with an army or a steady stallion, a white war horse. Jesus doesn't have swords or axes or bows and arrows. Jesus doesn't have armor. Jesus doesn't have a banner. Jesus doesn't have material wealth. Jesus doesn't have this kingdom. It's so funny that Jesus wants to fulfill prophecy at this point that they go and they get a donkey. <laughs> a donkey. Think about that for a minute. I like to ask kids when we talk about the story, if you could make an entrance, what would be the grandest entrance you could make? What would you like to ride in? Would you like a limousine? Some kids have said Lamborghinis, you know? I had one person said they'd like to ride a bear. That blows my mind. But it's really cool, isn't it? And when we see people come out of limousines and Lamborghinis and Ferraris and exotic supercars and or even diving out of planes, we tend to go, wow, that's something special. That's somebody you've got to pay attention to if they're coming out and making that kind of an entrance. And that is not the entrance Jesus is trying to make. Jesus goes in through the side gate, and he rides a donkey. Would you have ever expected that Jesus comes in on a donkey? That the person that is going to save the world, that God made flesh, was going to come in on a donkey? And not even like an angel escort. Instead, what happens is he processes through the city and people, they take their coats, they throw them on the ground, and they also go through the palms. And as they're coming through the palms, they're throwing them on the ground and they're saying, Hosanna, God save us, is what Hosanna means. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, save us. Because for some people, the unexpected actually breaks through. This is the day where God actually breaks through into our lives as we know it. To do the work of saving the world. This is the moment where the monotony that we find ourselves trapped in day after day after day gets shattered. And something new is happening. 
There's another telling of this story when Jesus actually comes in to the city. This, you got to hear this. The people are partying. They're partying. And the religious authorities, they, no, oh, they don't want this. Man, you can't have people partying over someone that isn't a Pharisee. What, or the Roman emperor? You know how much trouble we'd get in? They come and they say, you've got to tell these people the quiet thing. You got to tell them that this is not, this is too much, all right? If they can, we can have a little party and say that we're glad to see you, Jesus, but hold on. You got to tell them to calm down. And Jesus replies, I tell you, if these people were to stay quiet, the very stones would cry out. The very rocks under our feet will cry out in acknowledgement that Jesus is Lord. The entirety of creation, from you to me to the very rocks we walk on, to the couches you're sitting on as you're tuning in today, have the potential to recognize Jesus Christ breaking through the mundane and ordinary in our world. Every moment of our lives, God is breaking through into this world. Every moment, God is a light breaking through the cracks of our very dark world. We don't know when this pandemic will be over. We don't know how long this new normal will be. But through the cracks, if you listen and look for it, you will see God begin to break through and do extraordinary things. You will see miracles. You will see something extraordinary. You will begin to be waking up and you will begin to open your eyes to see that there is so much more to this life than just everyday living. And here and now, Jesus comes riding in on a donkey to transform you in love. And the only response I think any of us could have is the response that the people have as they throw their palm branches onto the ground. Hosanna. God save us. Hosanna in the highest because God is taking action to mend the brokenness in our lives and our world. And if you look for Christ, if you earnestly seek him, if you are willing to line the streets, maybe more figuratively than literally in, in this time, but if you are willing to say something, say or do anything so the rocks don't have to do it for you, then you will have an experience with the living God. Because today, on Palm Sunday, here and now, Jesus is coming to town. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. My friends, let this Sunday be the day. Let Palm Sunday be the day that you actually cry out and acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is coming in unexpected ways to transform all of us in love. And let us go out into our communities in the safest way we can. And share that love and that light with those who so desperately need it. So go now in the name of that God who has made you in love. Go now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ who saves you through grace. And go now in the name of the Holy Spirit that will strengthen and sustain us until we meet again. Amen.